I'm not saying it's intensified too much. Uh, because they have that single goal, they know that's not nearly enough in the National Hockey League under most circumstances. They're playing a very tough center ice game right now, keeping Toronto from getting formed up. Uh, so far, the Leafs have not been able to get any kind of momentum coming down on a good rush. Five minutes have gone by in this second period. Chicago leading on the strength of that one to nothing goal by Kenny Warren as we look at Davey Keon, who's doing the facing off with Mackey. Jarrett for Chicago. To Mackey. Drops it back for Pilat. Over the stick of Dennis Hull. Back into the Toronto zone. Alan Stanley there. It's going to be an icing against Chicago. So, puck will be brought back out and faced off. And we've gone 5-10 now in this second period. Other games going tonight. Detroit at Boston. Los Angeles at New York. St. Louis at Oakland. And Minnesota plays the Philadelphia Flyers at Quebec City. Davey Keon will again do the faceoff chores for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Number 14 against Chico Mackey. And a shot tried in there by Conacher. Goes Hawaii. Cleared by Nestorenko. Tries to get around Stanley. Ridden off by Oliver. Oliver with the puck. Drops it for Conacher. Brian overskates the puck and Mackey comes up with it for the Hawks. But Dennis Hall can't get to it. Dennis Hall keeps it in the zone. This is Mackey. And Bauer. Off the road into the games. He made the initial stop. And let's take a look at it again. You ask how old Johnny Bauer is. He's young enough. Watch the fast reaction as we look at it again on a rolling puck that could go into the net. Here. Just got that left paw on it in time. There he is, the venerable Johnny Bauer. Everybody tries to guess his age. He says, as long as I feel well, I'm not telling you how old I am. The book says he's 43. Stan Makita to face off against Mike Walton. Number 16 in the light jersey for Toronto. Five and a half minutes have gone by here in the second period. Chicago leading one to nothing. Marat sends one off the stick of Johnny Bauer in the goal. Makita's in the crease. He's written off. Ellis. For Walton. Can't get to it in time. Took his eyes off the puck long enough for Murat. The intercept. Give to Makita. Stapleton. Sweeps over to Makita. And now Warren, who scored the first Chicago goal. The only goal. Makita couldn't control the puck as he broke in. Holford to Hillman. Knocked down by Murat. He cleared out of the zone. Bonneville waits for his teammates to get onside, then sends it back toward the Chicago zone. We have an offside against Toronto. As Makita and Pulford have a few comments to make to each other. Quickly, referee Bruce Hood steps in between Stan Makita, number 21, and Bob Pulford, number 20, for Toronto. Value of the kind of defenseman Jill Murata, as we showed a moment or so ago, Walton coming down. He was afraid of the body check and took his eyes off the puck, didn't have good control, and lost it. Those heavy hitters sometimes are very good. Six minutes have gone by, 14 to go in this second period. Blackhawks of Chicago won the Maple Leafs of Toronto nothing. Marat all the way down into the Toronto zone. And we're going to have an icing call against the Chicago Blackhawks. Only score in the game so far by Kenny Warham. Came in the first period. Makita got an assist at three minutes and 45 seconds, as did Doug Jarrett. And we've had a total so far of five penalties in the game. They have been hitting hard, but not extremely so. And certainly it's been a clean game up until now. The face off to the right side of Jack Norris. So Mike Walton will face off against Makita to the right of the Chicago goal. Marat. Checked by Walt. But Makita's there to pick it up. Comes to Stapleton in front of the Chicago goal. Makita can't get through the Toronto defense. Now Marat drives. Look at this big guy going there. Takes the shot and goal. Kicked out by Bauer. Loose puck. Rolling down, just almost put in the left hand side. Missed by inches. Now the Blackhawks. Aroused here by this play. Try to keep it in. Warham. Shot on goal. Score. Eddie Warham on the right hand side. Stan Makita was just near the crease. There's a possibility he might have gotten a stick on that Warham shot. Watch for Makita just to the left side of Johnny Bauer. We'll have to wait and see. There's Stan Makita, and I believe he will get credit for the goal. Warren took the initial shot. The time of the goal, seven minutes of the second period. There's Stan Makita. So, with 
13 minutes remaining in the second period. The action is stopped. Let's pause for a moment. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you hear this warning, and it lasts from three to five minutes, follow the instructions in the Civil Defense Emergency Plan of your community. Okay, they've given the goal to Kenny Warham. They say Makita did not touch the puck. So Kenny Warham gets his second goal of the afternoon. That's his 24th of the year. Stapleton and Moans get assists on the play. Makita doesn't even get an assist on it, and he was that close to taking it in. Chicago leads 2 to nothing. Time of the goal, seven minutes of the second period. We'll have a face-off in the Chicago defensive zone now. No doubt about the fact that while that was Warham's goal, that Jill Marat should somehow have gotten some kind of an honorary assist. A tremendous effort by Marat carrying that puck up. Missing his first shot by hitting the post and then taking a real great swipe at it. Didn't think he had a possibility of getting a stick to it and almost put it in the second time. Jarrett facing off against Norm Ullman. Toronto down by two goals. 13 minutes to go in the second period. Bobby Schmutz out the center ice. Smith stops it there for Toronto and sends it back toward Norris. Jarrett along the boards, able to clear the zone, but intercepted now. Pitt Martin on the Bobby Hull stick. Gets around Smith. Portman is there. Portman in front of his own goal on the pass off to Smith at the right wing. Looking for Henderson, who can't get there in time. And Schmutz back checking for Chicago, able to take the puck and send it along the boards. Portman, slap shot, deflected. Smith in the corner. Coming out in front of the net. Cleared away by Norris. Got that stick down, the big goaltender. And Martin pushes it in front of him and overshoots Bobby Hall all the way down. And we're going to have an icing called against the Chicago Blackhawks. Watching Chicago here this afternoon, they are going to change that goal back to the way we had it. Stan Makita, that is Makita's goal. Watching Chicago skate here this afternoon, the way they've been skating over the past week is like night and day. This is a sharp, hard skating, good shooting team. Their pass work is fine, the defense is excellent, and it looks like whatever it was that was plaguing them, they've gotten rid of now. There's Stan Makita who gets that goal. Well, we were right the first time. It's two to nothing. Chicago out in front now. Makita with the goal. That's his 39th of the year. They've changed it. Staple and clearing in front of the Chicago net. And the puck goes into the crowd. So Chicago maintains the two to nothing lead with eight minutes gone by in the second period. Makita getting two points this afternoon. Now increasing his league lead in scoring to 78. His closest pursuer, Rod Gilbert of New York with 74. A little huddle going on out there between Drain Rupp, number four, making his first appearance on the ice for Toronto, playing at defense, and Brian Conacher. Davey Keon will face off against Chico Mackey. Mackey now conferring with Stapleton. There's Dwayne Rupp, who's just coming on the back line for the Maple Leafs, first time. Stapleton along the boards, kept in by Rupp. Buys a slapper, knocked down. Oliver digs for it, can't get to it. Dennis Hull controls for the Hawks. Sends it out to center ice. Stapleton back in his own zone. Onto the stick of Mackey. Poked away from him by Marcel Pronovo. Now, up the ice goes Dennis Hall. Skating, getting around. Rupp comes in, can't get the shot on goal. And now it's Oliver trying to push it out, but Marat keeps it in. Marat with the shot, deflected by the skate of Pronovo. Keon sends it around. Mackey drops it, but nobody for the Hawks able to pick it up. Oliver at center ice. Oliver fakes the shot. Marat goes down. Oliver still controlling out in front. Deflected by the skate of Eric Nestorenko. And back out to the Toronto blue line comes the puckers. Marcel Pronovo. Controls with nine minutes gone by and 11 minutes to go in the second period. A bouncing puck. Luckily, it goes wide to the right of the goal. Those can give a goaltender all sorts of picks. Halfway through the second period here, Chicago leading two to nothing. Comes out to center ice. Rupp looking for Stanley, but Ellis of his own team is able to pick it up. Ron Ellis getting around Dennis Hall, slowed him up long enough for Chico Mackey to take it away. Nestorinko can't control a bouncing puck, and it's back at the Toronto Blue Line where Bob Pulford starts up the ice. Slap shot off the glass on top of the 
boards there behind the Toronto goal. And Gio Marat clears on the pass to Stan Makita. Makita takes a bouncing shot, which goes to the right of Johnny Bauer. Bulford up the ice once again. Bulford still with it. Driving in is Ellis. Can't get there. And Palat comes up with it for the Blackhawks. Over the stick of Warham. Stanley across the Horton. And we're halfway through the second period as Pulford digs into the corner. Sends it out in front. Hits the side of the cage. Warham behind the Chicago net. The moans to Warham. Warham drives in looking for the hat trick. But ridden off by Tim Horton who clears the puck. This is Jarrett for Chicago, offside the Blackhawks. It is 2-0. Warren, of course, was given credit for that Makita goal, which would have given him two. And now, just in case you missed it, Makita's gotten that second goal. So it's Warren with one, Makita with one. And Warren almost had his second one there. It's a 2-0 game in favor of the Chicago Blackhawks, who are skating very well. I think the full measure of it is the fact that the Toronto Maple Leafs are also having one of their better games. Uh, they are not losing this one. They're being beaten so far. So we have about nine minutes remaining in the second period. Makita to face off with Norm Allman. Dwayne Rupp clearing it, but intercepted by Jarrett. Fenceman stopped by Rupp after he clears. Makita overskates the puck, trying to drive in, and now Warren tries to feed through. Stopped by Pronovol. This is Paul Henderson, former Red Wing. Boy, Makita lost his stick. And Rupp takes the shot, which is wide to the left. Warren there. Kept in by Toronto. Now Jarrett behind the net comes up with it. And back out to center ice. Allman hits teammate Floyd Smith in the chest with the shot. And it comes back down into the Toronto zone. Marcel Pronovo races after it. Eight and a half minutes remaining in this second period. Pronovo with a bouncing puck. Kept in by Chicago. Makita in his favorite spot right across the crease. Moans. Can't get to it, and so Henderson has it for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Henderson now fires one on goal, deflected by Stapleton. Whitey Stapleton right onto the stick of Pitt Martin, who overskated. He had a good break on it, then overskated the puck. Stapleton goes back into his own zone to pick it up. Bill Ott. Bobby Hall at the blue line. Let's it fly! Turned away by the glove of Johnny Bauer. Oliver sends it to Mike Pellick, who's playing on defense now with Tim Horton. This is Horton. Along the boards to Brian Conacher. He's playing in place of the injured George Armstrong. Takes the shot. It's into the pads of Murat, who clears for Chicago. Down go three players. Two Leafs and a Blackhawk. Schmutz breaks in on Bauer, and he overskates as he tried to put it. Jumped over the stick. And lost the puck. Oliver controls for the Leafs. Kept in by Chicago. Now out into center ice it goes. And Oliver once again picks it up for Toronto. Oliver shot. Last minute stick save by Jack Norris. Out in front. Stapleton clears away. Hull dumps Conacher in the corner. Keon. The Conacher. And Marat throws a check against Conacher, who's taking a pretty, pretty hard physical beating here in this uh, shift that he's had on the ice out here. Back out to center ice. Marat on to Bobby Hull stick. Hull can't control it. Spun around in there by Horton. And Pellick comes up with it for Toronto. Six and a half minutes remaining in this second period. Chicago leads two to nothing. Stapleton. The action continues as Schmatz comes up the ice. Schmatz on a pass for Martin. Schmatz still with it. Still with it. And finally, here's Keon breaking up the left side. Drives in on Norris. Shot on goal. Turned away by Norris. He came out to cut down the angle and earned away the shot. By Davy Keon. Back to the Toronto zone it goes. And we're going to have an icing call against the Chicago Blackhawks. So with six minutes remaining in the second period, the action will stop. Let's pause for a moment. Come on. Get in a young mobile. Buckle up and move out in an Oldsmobile. Give Olds young wheels a whirl. What's young is what Olds is this year. The young wheels are the Oldsmobiles. 
like the all-new Cutlass S. High performance 442. Drifty F85. Front-wheel drive Toronado. Exciting new 88. Young mobiles. Styled fresh. Styled old. Styled young. Powered young with a new generation of rocket engines. And all priced very young. The young wheels are the Oldsmobiles. Give old young wheels a whirl at your nearest Oldsmobile dealer. We go now with about six minutes remaining in the second period. Chicago protecting a two to nothing lead. Dennis Hull, a bouncing shot stopped by Johnny Bauer. Marcel Pronovo behind the Toronto net. Goes to Dwayne Rupp. Right into the pads. Cleared away by Jack Norris. Check thrown against Hill out in the corner there by Ellis. Jarrett to dig it out. Kept in by Rupp. Still out now. Walton in there. Walton trying to kick it free. Behind the Chicago net. Ellis trying to tie up that puck with Pilat. And finally they freeze it against the boards and we have the faceoff. Eric Nestorinko also in on the fray. Toronto Maple Leafs are giving it a real hard battle. And we still have a full period plus some five minutes left to go. Five and a half minutes to go. So this is one of those ones that you really can't leave. The Blackhawks are skating the best we've seen them in the last couple of weeks. And the Leafs are not bad at all. It's a tight game. Face off now between the two rival number 16s. In the light jersey, Mike Walton. In the dark jersey, it is Chico Mackey of Chicago. Pilat pursues the puck into the corner. Comes out to Pronovo. Sends a bouncer to Norris. See how he brings those legs together, those bouncers. Mackey dropping it back for Jarrett. Jarrett can't feed it through. And now Walton breaks up the ice for Toronto. But he can't control it. And the puck goes high in the air, bouncing down in the corner. Pilat hammered in there by both Fulford and Walton, but manages to get the pass away. Now Dennis Hull scrambles for it. And Nestorenko clears, and a pass to Mackey. Pilat, back to Mackey. Shot on goal wide the left. Nestorenko looking for the rebound. His backhand hits the side of the cage. Bonobo onto the stick of Mike Walton at the Toronto blue line. Manages to clear and then leaves it for a run. Back to Walsh. Poked away by Nestorenko. Got a break by Nestorenko. Shot on goal. This is the left hand side. Dennis Hull. Makita. Trying to feed it through. Nestorenko in the corner. Out in front. Digging for it is Dennis Hull. Right out in front. The stick of Bauer stopping that shot. And Pronovo lifts it into the crowd. Trying to get a, a whistle here so that they can cool off the red hot Chicago Blackhawks who lead two to nothing. With four minutes and 15 seconds remaining, and we look now at Marcel Pronovo, the veteran defenseman of the Toronto Maple Leafs, who had a long and illustrious career with the Detroit Red Wings before coming over here to Toronto. 4:15 remaining. He missed the goals. Warham in the first period. Makita in the second. Chicago leads 2-0. Back to the Chicago blue line comes Whitey Stapleton. Marat, back to Stapleton. Allman for checking. Smith goes after. He can't get there in time. Lloyd Smith backhands it onto the pads of Murat, who clears out of the Chicago zone. Gilles carries at the Toronto blue line. Looking to, for Makita. Alan Stanley, 40 year old defenseman for Toronto, breaks it up. Smith drives in. Stapleton rides him off. And now Makita for Warham. Trying to hit Moans. Broken up in there by Horton. And Smith with the shot. Turned aside by Norris. Henderson shot off the skate of Stapleton. Three and a half minutes remaining in the second period. Chicago leading Toronto two to nothing. Makita at the red line. There Smith sends it along the boards to Henderson. Returns it back over to Horton. Allman at the blue line. Stapleton stopping him at center ice. Makita goes high in the air and driving in now. Offside Chicago. As Makita was already in the attacking zone for the Chicago Blackhawks. So, with about three minutes and ten seconds, we see Stan Makita, who just about nailed down every honor last year, most valuable player, scoring champion, Lady Bing winner. And this year, he is leading the National Hockey League in points scored. He has two this afternoon for a total of 78. 
mentioned earlier, Rod Schubert of New York, who uh, the Rangers playing at home tonight against Los Angeles, is now four points behind Nikita with 74. Avi Hull. Dwayne Ruff for Toronto, clearing the zone. Intercepted by, by uh, Kit Martin. An offside call against Toronto as Murray Oliver had broken across the blue line ahead of the puck. And so we're down to the three minute mark now in this second period. Three minutes remaining. Going into the final three weeks of the season now. And it's a dogfight in the Western Division. And it's still nothing to be settled, nothing yet settled in the Western, in the Eastern Division. Gallant. Kept in by Pronovo. Stick saved by Norris. Rupp drives one. It's wide to the left hand side. Keon tries to set it out in front. In the corner is Conacher. Drops it back. Oliver takes, loses it to Martin. Kept in there by Rupp. And Doug Jarrett for Chicago digs it over to Hull, who sends it all the way down the ice to the Toronto Zone. Oh, Pronovo will skate back and get to it. Touch it. There'll be an icing. If you look at Pierre Pallad, who lost a stick in the process. Broke his stick, dropped it immediately, and goes over and gets a new war club. Two and a half minutes remaining. There is the captain of the Chicago Blackhawks. What a long and fine career he has had in the National Hockey League. Pierre Pallad. Walton, face off for Toronto against Doug Jarrett, defenseman for Chicago. Stanley can't get over in time to keep it in. Has to wait till his team gets on side. Now we have an offside called against the Blackhawks. The pass going across the blue and red line. So it'll be faced off back in the Chicago zone. With two minutes and 20 seconds to go. And the Blackhawks leading by a score of two to nothing. Blackhawks leading Toronto by 10 points in the battle for the fourth place in the National Hockey League. Back to the Toronto zone it goes. Alan Stanley skates hard. And we have an icing call against Chicago. Fans not in complete accord here thinking that Stanley could have really Increased his speed in pursuit of that puck and got into it in time. Of course, the linesman makes the final decision on it. So they say it's a deliberate icing by Chicago, and the faceoff will take place back in the Chicago defensive zone. Neil Armstrong, the linesman. Pitt Martin for Chicago to Bobby Hull stick at the blue line. Chicago Hull's shot is partially deflected in there by the back checking of Ron Ellis. Alan Stanley to Horton. Horton to Pulford. Gets around one man. A whack taken by Jarrett, and he has to come back in a hurry as he took a whack at it and fanned on the play. Martin to Bobby Hall. Hall loses on a sweep check. Ron Ellis sends it behind the Toronto goal. Hull tries to clear it out there, but Bob Pulford will not allow that to be done. And now Alan Stanley controls for Toronto and sends it all the way back to the Chicago zone. And now the Lansman waves off any icing as Jarrett was looking around. Lansman saying that Jarrett could have gone for it. The opposite of what the play was just called. And so Chicago fans not ecstatic about that one. Schmutz digs in the right hand side. Out in front off the stick. The power as Hull was breaking in from the left hand side. We're down to the final minute of play. We have a three on one. Hull, Martin, kicked away by Bauer. And Walton clears out the center ice. One minute to play in the second period. Chicago leads two and nothing. Martin fakes the shot, drops it for Hull, ridden off the play by Horton. Fulford. Back to a bouncing puck over the stick of Horton, and Bauer came out of his net there. Goaltenders have to be alive all the time. Stapleton. Schmatz. Stopped at the blue line by Stanley. Down to the 30-second mark now. 30 seconds remaining in the second period as the puck goes skidding along the boards behind the Toronto goal. There it's picked off by Tim Horton. Comes to the blue line to Smith. Overpassing Ullman and uh, Henderson. So two Blackhawks go for it. Nestorenko. Out in front. A bouncer right across the crease. Ten seconds to go in the period. Horton and Stapleton cannot keep it in there. Goes all the way back down. And let's see. Icing called against Toronto. The clock shows that time has elapsed here in this second period. Now they'll probably have time for just a faceoff. The clock shows that the second period has come to a close, but they'll just have about a half second or so. Unless Bruce Hood, let's see what he does here. 
He says what? Comes over the bench. So linesman Brent Kassman is over there with the puck ready to drop it as Johnny Bauer looks on from the Toronto goal. Just about a, a split second or so before the end of the second period. That big red hand on the scoreboard clock is just a hair off being straight up. Dennis Hull will do the facing off against Wayne Rupp. Number four on defense for Toronto is Rupp. There's the buzzer just as the puck is dropped. And there is the end of the second period with the score of the Chicago Blackhawks two and the Toronto Maple Leafs nothing. This is a man without a home. Dallas this week, San Francisco next. The professional traveler. Three days with the family, three days in Cleveland. He's a stranger to the other passengers, and yet he's made the day a little nicer for all of them. We built American Airlines with the problems of men like this in mind. They buy a lot of tickets. It's worth whatever it takes to make their trips easier. Because of him, this little girl's reservations were put on a computer to make sure her seat will be her seat. And this woman will get a salt-free diet. And this couple will be able to take their vacation, even though they lost their tickets. Who is this man? You wouldn't know him, but we do. We built a whole airline for him. any travel agent about American Airlines. You'll love it. We'll return to the Chicago Stadium after this pause for station identification. Political intrigue within the walls of a prison summons the skills of the Mission Impossible team tonight on CBS. Mrs. Bobby Hull. Mrs. Joanne Hull. Hi, Jim. Hi, Joanne. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good. And standing right in front of the picture that we talked about just a couple of weeks ago here in Chicago. Tell me a little bit about this one. Why did you paint it? Actually, Jim, this painting started out to be a gift for Mr. Wirtz, the owner of the Blackhawks and our boss. And uh, one day I take my youngsters in to see his secretary, Mrs. Knowles, every time that they come to the game. She has a bag of peanuts and so forth. And she, we were talking and she suggested that he might like something like that for his office. And uh, so I painted it. And uh, at the time when I, the day I brought it home, Bob was on a road trip. And he came home that night and saw it sitting on our desk at about 3 o'clock in the morning and decided it was just for him. So I'm afraid Mr. Wirtz will have to wait till I paint the next one. Well, maybe you can get a reproduction or a copy. You can have some prints made. I'm going to try. <laughs> is this the type of painting you like to do, Joanne? Is this the style you, you favor? Well, it's not really the style, Jim, I, I like. I tried to get it as impressionist as I could and as loose as I could. But uh, portraits are hard, at least for me to do. And uh, I tried to loosen it up quite a bit, but it's... Uh, it's still a portrait, and I find them very difficult. Let's talk a little bit about how you started. We take another look over here at one of the more impressionistic things that you've done. How did you get started? Have you studied this before? Uh, I started about four years ago, Jim. Uh, Bob was on the road, of course, a great deal, and uh, not that I wasn't busy enough with three young sons, but I wanted to do something, and my brother is a professional artist in California, and I saw him do it and decided I could do it, and uh, I've been at it ever since. And this is the type of... Uh, the style, my style of painting, this style here, Impressionist. Tell me about this. Is that one of the boys? Well, it started, <laughs> it started out to be one of the boys. Uh, uh, my boys are all toe-headed and about that age. And uh, it got a little semi-abstracted there and turned out to be just a boy. I saw one of the boys here today at the game. Uh, it must be an interesting family type of affair to come and watch Dad on the ice. What kind of reaction does, do they have, especially when he gets hurt or is in a, in a bit of a jam? Uh, Jim, they're, they're characters, really, they are. Uh, a gentleman with us today commented that uh, Bobby Hull had his own uh, cheering section. But when they were little, we used to bring them, and we used to joke, they used to come to eat, you know, hamburgers, uh, Coke, popcorn, anything that they could, you know, mo mother'd buy for them. 
But now they're pretty good. Bobby sits on uh, the lap of our, uh, one of our gentlemen who guards the uh, door for the Blackhawks. And he keeps score, actually. He writes down who gets the goal, who gets the assist. And he's quite good. And the, uh, our youngest, Brett, he's three. He cheers for Stan Makita, so... Uh, <laughs> How do they react, Joanne, uh, when, when Dad's in trouble on the ice? Do they take it personally or do they look at him as a hockey player? Well, they really get a little upset. They've only seen him once uh, get into a fight. But um, other than that, they're pretty good. They just cheer and take it like, oh, almost like it would be a movie or something. Yeah. They all talk about hockey at all, about playing? Do they think they might? They're young, I know. Oh, they're all going to be hockey players, they say. I, I don't know. Uh, down here in the States, uh, there isn't, of course, the training uh, for youngsters in the um, minor hockey league, like uh, leagues like there are in Canada. But uh, they're coming along now, so they're going to start playing next year in the uh, little league, so they may yet turn out to be hockey players. Tell me about how Mama feels about this. When, when Bobby's on the road, it, it must seem like an awful long time. You watch the television, listen to the radio broadcast of the games, I'm sure. Oh, yes. uh, is, uh, is there a bit of worry and concern? Oh, yes, there is. There really is. Bob's had some very bad injuries, and uh, I used to get very, very upset about it. And then one of the other wives, one of the older girls, I believe it was uh, Glenn Hall, the goaltender for St. Louis, his wife told me that you just can't get so upset. Uh, you have to go to a lot of hockey games, and I'd be a nervous wreck. So I just took it, like I had explained before, like watching a movie. And uh, I still find, though, some Boston games and other games I get a little upset, especially if I'm home watching it or if I listen on the radio. Then I get very upset. Do you ever get upset about the tactics against Bobby? They have a tendency, of course, to gang up on Bob to put two men on him at a time, any time they can to slow him down. Yes, Jim, I, that's one of my pet peeves. That's a sore point with me. I really think it's uh, not fair to Bob and not fair to the game of hockey. You know, it really isn't. And it slows up the game, and it, uh, you, the fans can't really see a good game of hockey. Bobby talks occasionally, as a matter of fact, he talks more and more than occasionally about uh, retiring to the farm one of these days. Would you like to be a farm wife? <laughs> I'd love it. I really would. I enjoy it. We're only up in the summers now, but I really do like it. I think country life is, is marvelous, and it's going to be wonderful for my boys, and uh, I'm really looking forward to the day when we can be full-time farmers. Until that day, Joanne, do you think that this has helped the boys at all, the fact that they're living in Chicago and spend some time in Canada and get to travel around a little bit? Is it good for them? Well, Jim, at first I didn't think it was going to be. I thought, oh, you know how they talk about security for children and so forth, and I thought, you know, they'd be moved around too much. But they're pretty well-adjusted boys, and uh, now this is the first year that Bobby's in school. He's in first grade, my six-year-old. And uh, so we'll stay here now till the end of the school year. I will. I think Bob will be up to the farm about a month early. But uh, it'll all work out. Some pretty well-adjusted boys with some pretty well-adjusted parents from the National Hockey League. Joanne, thank you very much. You, we'll return with more hockey to the Chicago Stadium in just a moment. Telephone, $13.75. Drugstore, $23. Gas station, eleven seventy-five. Dentist, 20 Life goes on, and so do bills. What's the best kind of life insurance policy? A John Hancock man won't have any snap answers. He'll sit down with you and figure out what's best for your own family's needs. Maybe a plan that insures both you and your wife because you both work. Or maybe a John Hancock plan that provides a monthly check to pay the family bills. Maybe you'll take a feature from one plan and add it to another. Maybe not. If anybody in this life insurance business can design the right plan for you, it's probably us. John Hancock, huh? This afternoon, when Mike Walton was able to get two penalty shots in a row, not in one game, but in two separate games. One last night and one here at Chicago this afternoon. Let's take a look at it. As Mike Walton again, and remember what you have to have in order to have a penalty shot, you must have a clear look at that goaltender, nobody between you and him, and be cut down from behind. Now watch for the penalty as Walton comes down ice. Clearly, nobody between him and the goal, hooked from behind. And Bruce Hood calls it, and calls it immediately, pointing out towards center ice. Toronto, Mike Walton is awarded a penalty Here's shot. Mike, as the announcement is made. Time, 
39. And here's the shot itself, and a beautiful job by Jack Norris. We'll be back with more action from Chicago Stadium in just a moment. An untuned car is looking for trouble, and sometimes it finds it. This is a demonstration, a test by Champion Spark Plug Company to measure the passing power of cars with old worn spark plugs and untuned engines. As each car starts to pass the test vehicle, the throttle is automatically opened wide. Will the car get back in lane before reaching the barrier? Not this time. Now the same car gets a champion tune-up. Its worn spark plugs, a major cause of power loss, are replaced by a new set of champions. Other tune-up items are added as needed. Now the test is repeated. This time the car easily gets back in lane. With all cars tested, tuned cars got back an average of seven and a half car lengths faster. Get a champion tune-up now and every 10,000 miles because an untuned car is trouble. Back at the Chicago Stadium, this is Stu Nahan along with Jim Gordon as we're getting ready to start the third and final period of this afternoon's hockey game, the National Hockey League Game of the Week on CBS. And Chicago leads Toronto by a score of two to nothing. How about those for those youngsters? Those are the Bobby Hull youngsters right there. Those three boys who are looking like they're having a pretty fine afternoon. Mr. Hull has certainly contributed an immeasurable amount of skill and excitement to the National Hockey League in the nine or ten years he's been in the league. Kenny Warham scored the first goal for Chicago in the first period. Makita and Jared getting assists at 345. In the second period, Makita tipping it in on a shot from Warham. With Moans also drawing an assist in seven minutes of the second period. There were no penalties handed out in the second period except for the penalty shot that was awarded to uh, Mike Walton. Now let's take a look at the leading scorers in the National Hockey League. Well, this is up to date, including the two points that Stan Makita has this afternoon. He now has 78. Rod Gilbert has 74 of New York. His teammate, Jean Rattel, has 73. Phil Esposito of Boston, 72. And the Blackhawks' Bobby Hull has 71. So there's the race for the leading scoring championship in the National Hockey League with just three weeks left to go in the regular season. Three weeks from today, the regular season ends, and then the Stanley Cup playoffs begin. It's a close race in both divisions in the National Hockey League, both in the East and in the West. And uh, the Montreal Canadiens leading in the Eastern Division by just six points over second place New York. Boston is two points behind New York, and the Hawks are three points behind Boston. Toronto, as we mentioned, ten points behind the Chicago Blackhawks. In the West, it's even closer. Philadelphia leads Minnesota by one point. Those two teams meet tonight in Quebec City. Los Angeles is just two points off the lead. St. Louis is three, and Pittsburgh is only six. So five of the six teams in the Western Division are only separated by six points in Oakland, while uh, a little bit behind, still has a chance to be the spoiler in the Western Division as they have to play most of those other teams in the Western Division race. Other games tonight, Detroit at Boston, Los Angeles at New York, and St. Louis playing out in Oakland. Now, the Blackhawks have returned to the ice now. Jack Norris, who's been in the net for the Chicago Blackhawks, has turned aside a total of 21 shots on goal. There he is. 13 in the first period, 8 in the second period. Chicago, meanwhile, has had 13 shots on goal in the first and 10 in the second for a total of 23. So they're out shooting Toronto by just two goals, two shots on goal. We started to mention earlier why Jack Norris was playing with Chicago. He has been playing with their Dallas Farm Club, but Dennis DeJordi, who is the regular goaltender for the Blackhawks, suffered a split finger on his glove hand, and also his father-in-law passed away in upstate New York. So he is away from the team for the moment. Ken Dryden, the other Chicago goaltender, started last night's game, but uh, Norris came on, played the final two periods, and started this afternoon. There is Johnny Bauer, the venerable goaltender and co-hero in the Nets for Toronto last year. He, along with Terry Sawchuk, played so beautifully for the Maple Leafs as they went on to win the Stanley Cup championship from Montreal in six games. 
Johnny Bauer contributing a large amount to that victory. Terry Sawchuk has since gone on to the Los Angeles Kings. Stan Makita's line will be on the ice for Chicago as we get ready to start period number three. Moans at left wing and Warham at right wing. This line is counted for both of the Chicago scores. Davey Keon's line on the ice for Toronto. Normally George Armstrong plays the right wing, but he has been hobbled by a leg injury and also got a, a forearm in the face last night against Detroit. So Brian Conacher, number 22 at the bottom of your picture, with the helmet, is playing at right wing. He's normally a penalty killer. And uh, Murray Oliver is playing the left wing on this line. Now, Walton goes into the Toronto bench. We're ready to start the third and final period. Chicago 2, Toronto nothing, and we're underway. Stapleton. Stopped and center ice by Horton temporarily. Makita bouncing shot. Stopped by Bauer. Horton to Conacher. Stapleton keeps it in. Now Horton pursued by Moans. Behind his own net is Tim Horton, the acting captain. Davy Keon. And Keon trying to get to the puck himself instead of Conacher. If he had done so, it would have been an onside pass, but instead Conacher reached out there and so it's been brought back and, and faced off back in the defensive zone of Toronto. Had Keon gotten to the puck himself, it would not have been an offside pass. Well, it'll be faced off between Davy and Stan Makita. Makita, right out in front of that, almost had a shot. Important to Keon. To Mike Pellick. The defenseman shoots on goal and stopped by Norris as the whistle sounds, and we have an offside against the Leafs. Kenny Warham and Stan Makita, the only two scorers this afternoon, in an excellently played game from both stands, both, both standpoints. The major part of the difference, of course, has been Jack Norris, who not only has stopped Toronto as they came down during regular play, but also during the penalty shot. Davy Keon, a very tough man to handle, one of the best centers in the league, but he's going against Stan Makita, and you can't say anything more about him. Stapleton with the puck to Warham. Off Marat's stick. Takes it away from the onrushing Davy Keon as Marat comes up the ice for the Hawks. Tries the shot. It's deflected and slowed up. Keon behind his own net with the puck. We've gone a minute into this third period. Chicago leading Toronto 2 to nothing. Murray Oliver. For Toronto. Still with it is Oliver. Still with it. Drops it off for Keon. Overskates. Conacher tries the shot. Deflected off away. And Marat goes behind his own net to come up with the puck. Keon takes him out of the play, and then Marat in turn returns the compliment. Keon has got his skates caught in the net behind the Chicago goal there. Up the ice comes Moans, tries the shot on goal, and it's deflected. Davy Keon's got his skates, meanwhile, caught in the net. And there's a whistle down in the Chicago end, and now their action is stopped here with 18 and a half minutes remaining here in the final period. Let's pause for a moment. The National Hockey League Game of the Week next week will feature the Detroit Red Wings and the Minnesota North Stars who are pushing the Philadelphia Flyers for the Western Division lead. That's next Sunday, 2 p.m., live and in color. That's 2 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS. Okay, we're a minute and a half into this third period, Jim, and it's 2 to nothing, Chicago. Norm Allman. Allman trying to control that puck. To Floyd Smith. Overskated by Marcel Ponovo and controlled by Pitt Martin of Chicago. Stopped at center ice by Henderson. Ponovo looking for Henderson. Overskates. And Palat into the corner. Norm Allman just barges right in there and tries to center it out, but Bobby Hull is there to break up the Toronto attack. This is Hull. To Doug Jarrett. Stopped by Allman. Jarrett's still with it. Allman can't keep in the zone. And it goes all the way down to the Toronto zone. And there Bauer starts to skate out and thinks better of it as he sees Rupp, his own defenseman, coming toward him. And decides to play it safely, get back into the net. Hull at the blue line. Just missed the right hand side. Bobby Hull winding up from the blue line. Allman. 
to Dwayne Rupp of Toronto. Onto the stick of Smith. He lets it fly, and it's off to the left of the goal. Schmutz over skates. Almond tries the rebound. Just cleared away by Norris in the last moment. Good rebound effort there by Toronto. Almond still with it. Down on his knees. Manages to push it away, but it's controlled now by the Blackhawks. A rink-wide pass from Hull to Schmutz. Leading for Bobby Hull. Breaks it in the goal center and misses the net with that slap shot. Comes all the way back to the Toronto zone. That's how much power there was behind that whole shot. There are a bunch of fans sitting in that back corner who are awfully happy about that glass. That one was really zinging. They're brave to sit over there. Bobby Hull helping get into the Toronto zone. Mike Pellick, key defenseman behind the Toronto net. Three and a half minutes along in this final period. Chicago leads Toronto two to nothing. Dump all the way down by Pellick to the Chicago zone. And we're going to have an icing call against Toronto. We'll pause now. Five seconds for station identification. Face off as the action gets underway, just off to the right of Johnny Bauer, who's allowed two in under a real good Chicago assault this afternoon. Chico Mackey facing off against Tim Horton. Just as the puck was about to be dropped, Brent Castle and the other linesman noticed that somebody was offside, had encroached upon that face-off circle, so they'll have to do it again. I believe it was Walt that come in that circle from the backside. Cleared out by Fulford sweep. Stapleton. Drops it back for Dennis Hall, but he's written off by Walton, and Ron Ellis sends it into the Chicago defensive zone. Gio Morata, Burley defenseman for the Blackhawks, to Dennis Hall. Back to the Toronto zone, going after it now is Mike Pellick, and they wave off the icing. We saw Neil Armstrong with the hands extended out. Now Horton pursues it, but Pulford is over there instead. He can't get it. Nestorenko for Chicago digs it out. Pellick holding it up against the boards. Nestorenko to Mackey. He can't get it. Dennis Hull comes over there. Horton is there now. Horton ridden down by Dennis Hull. Or by a Mackey, rather. Now Pulford is able to clear the zone. Good four checking effort there by Chicago, keeping it in that Toronto zone. Walt, now with a stick of Pellick. Dumped into the Chicago zone. Four and a half minutes have gone by in this final period. Blackhawks two, Toronto nothing. Stapleton takes it out. Stopped at the blue line by Marcel Bonneville of Toronto. Comes to Stapleton skate. Rink wide pass to Marat. Marat almost lost that puck on a poke check by Walt. Now Marat trying to feed through to Makita. And Horton just gets it out of the way. The all-star defenseman. Bonneville. Looking for Ellis. Dumps it all the way down. Down goes Ellis. Down goes Hull. They scramble for it. There'll be finally a frozen puck. And let's see. We're going to have a penalty called here. So, with 15 minutes remaining in the final period, the action is stopped. And let's pause for a moment. This is my house. Here's the mommy and the little girl and the daddy. Oops. Boom. Daddy. Poor family, too, because everybody's hurt when Daddy's hurt and the paydays stop. But your Prudential man can help you ease the financial pain with Prudential Disability Pay Insurance when it comes to helping you get well without getting poor. Prudential understands. Dennis Hull sitting in the penalty box. He'll be doing two minutes now. The Toronto Maple Leafs trailing the Chicago Blackhawks by a score of 2 nothing, and just a bit less than 15 minutes remaining in the game. This could be one of the most important plays of the entire afternoon for Toronto. They had a couple of other power plays. They were not able to score. Chicago stopped them dead. Let's see what happens now with Nikita getting in there right now. Almond's line on the ice for Toronto. Smith at right wing. Henderson at left wing. They've got Mike Walton playing the left point. So Toronto going now with four forwards on the ice. Hillman the only defenseman with the puck right now for the Leafs. They trail by two goals. Henderson. On to Smith's stick. Broken up in there temporarily by Jarrett. Henderson's shot wide. And Walton, who is normally playing the left point, can't get over in time to keep it in the attacking zone. Comes across the ice to Hillman. Now Walton. Shot stopped at the blue line once again by Tom Reed. And that shook him up a little bit. Puck goes high in the air. 
Boyd Smith. This is the line the Leafs obtained in that trade from Detroit last week. Walton. Looking for Henderson. Breaks in. Shot on goal. Right to the right-hand side. Norris fell to the ice. Smith out in front. Allman can't control the puck on the pass. Allman still with it. Still with it. Comes out to the left point to Walton. Walton has trouble. Hillman throws it up. Allman digs. And it's cleared out by Jarrett. With a good effort. Two on one. He's got Warren on the right side. Warren can't take the pass. It's in the air. Warren comes out to Moans. Broken up in there by Allman. Six and a half minutes have gone by. 45 seconds remaining on the penalty to Dennis Hull. Warren checked into the boards. By Floyd Smith, who goes after the puck. Allman comes up with it, leaves it for Hillman. Hillman breaks in on Norris. Right out in front, Norris picks it out. Goes all the way back to the Toronto zone. And Toronto, with the extra man, sends a fresh team on the ice. About 20 seconds remaining on the penalty now to Dennis Hull. Oliver collides with Reed, and down they go. In the meantime, the puck is cleared down to the Toronto zone again. Penalty about 10 seconds now. Dennis Hull, Toronto, power play. And an offside call against the Leafs. With one second remaining on the penalty to Dennis Hall. One second remaining. Faceoff will take place in center ice. That was a most important play for the Toronto Maple Leafs. They had those two big minutes, and of course we still have considerable time remaining. Just about 12 minutes and 40 seconds. But they've got to make every single play count. Remember, a playoff berth is at stake with every game they play, not only with Chicago, but with the rest of this league. Toronto, of course, is really bargaining on the fact they still have two games in hand, two more to play than do Chicago. Conceivably, they could be win. It'll be a tough one if it continues this way for them. All right, we've got about 13 minutes to go in this game. Dennis Hall races, but he's beaten to it by front of all, and they bounce up against the boards. Wayne Rupp on defense for Toronto. On to the stick of Davey Kia. Keon dumps it into the zone. Conacher looks for the rebound, and we've got an icing call against the Leafs. Two to nothing, Chicago leading Toronto, with Kenny Warham scoring in the first period and Stan McKeith in the second. Both teams now at full strength. And we have about 12 and a half minutes remaining to go in this contest here at the Chicago Stadium. Stan Makita has picked up two points this afternoon to raise his lead to four over his closest pursuer, Rod Gilbert of the New York Rangers, who plays at home tonight, the Rangers do. They play against Los Angeles. Now Brent Kassman giving a recheck of the Toronto net. So Pitt Martin will do the facing off for Chicago against Marcel Ponneval, kept in by Marat. Now, Keon. To the stick of Oliver. Shot on goal, misses the left hand side. Hall is spun around by Conacher. And around the boards it goes to Schmutz. The rookie tries to clear, can't do so. And Keon going by just takes a flick at it to keep it in. Now Hull starts up the ice and he's slowed up by Rupp. We're going to have a penalty call. We're going to have a penalty against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Wayne Rupp. So. The action is stopped with 12 minutes remaining in the final period. Let's pause for a moment. Lucky filters. You don't even have to light it to like it. When you do light up, that same fine lucky flavor comes through. Mild. Roll tobacco and charcoal in the filter, does it? Nourishes the taste and makes it mild. For a taste this good, you've got to get lucky. There's the penalty to Dwayne Rupp, holding at 8.05 of this third period. Toronto shorthanded a man now. Chicago leading 2 to nothing and have the extra skater on the ice. Hull shot. Akita raced in front. Warren tries to set it out in front. Moans into the corner. Ellis poke checks away at him. Hull lets one fly. Everybody ducks behind in the right-hand corner. Get your head down low. It's coming our way. So it'll be faced off in center ice between Stan Makita and Bob Fulford. Back to Horton. 
Toronto now shorthanded a man able to clear out the center ice Marat Bobby Hull playing the left point on the Chicago power play Stan Makita drops for Bobby Hull on the red line winds it up right into the pads of Johnny Bauer Johnny had that one all the way had it all the way couldn't find it by the time he made the stop it dropped into his pads you described as to but it was for him at least a routine stop and yet how much courage it must take to put your body between the net and the puck shot by Bobby Hull when in doubt just stay still so we have 11 and a half minutes to go Chicago leads Toronto two to nothing and we have a minute and a half remaining on the penalty to Wayne Ruff of Toronto Moan back to Murat comes the Blackhawks with the extra skater. Rock dumps into the corner, looking for the rebound. Bauer sends it behind for Ellis. Around the boards. Warham back to the point to Murat. Back to Warham. Over his stick. Makita out to Bobby Hull. Murat tries a left-handed shot. Knocked down in there by Alan Stanley. He's been used sparingly by Toronto this afternoon. Moans for Makita. Moans. their way in. Warham right out in front to Makita. Couldn't control it. Hull tries one. Off the pads of uh, Horton and he's able to clear. They have about 45 seconds now remaining on the penalty to Dwayne Ruff of Toronto. Ten and a half minutes remaining in the game. Chicago protecting a two to nothing lead. Moans drives up the ice. Slowed up by Horton. Makita comes to Hull. Shot on goal. Glove saved by Bauer. Reached out there. Hull keeps it in. Oh they say he didn't keep it in. So it'll be the face off and center ice. Two nothing the score in favor of the Chicago Blackhawks. We're just about at the halfway mark of the third period. The score is so far Kenny Warham in the first period and Stan Makita. Makita picking up two very important points because he's still driving for the individual scoring championship in the National Hockey League. Pitt Martin will face off now against Paul Henderson, number 19 of Toronto. Penalty has about 20 seconds to go. A stick save by Bauer and a shot by Jarrett. Henderson all the way down the ice to the Toronto zone. About 10 seconds remaining now on Rope's penalty. Jarrett behind his own net. Works his way to Bobby Hull. Hull tries to pass it across, but back checking was Henderson. And the penalty is up now as Rupp comes back on the ice. And both teams now are at full strength. Smith. Off the stick of defenseman Pierre Pallot of Chicago, who retreats behind his own goal. Hull leads across to Martin. Right side pass to Schmartz. Into the corner goes Bonobo. And we have an icing call against the Blackhawks. Ten and a half minutes have gone by in the third period. Chicago leading two to nothing. Which means, of course, that time is running down quite badly now on the Toronto Maple Leafs. There is no, certainly it's too early in the season, even though we're coming down at the concluding week, to say that this is a do or die game. But there is no doubt about the fact that it was one of the critical games of the entire year for the Leafs. They have skated very well throughout the first and second period. A little bit tired now, but still a chance. Let's see now. Rupp tries a whack at it. Bobby Hull steals it. Races up the ice. Rupp comes after him and ties him up effectively so he can't get the shot away. Rupp playing a good, strong game on defense for Toronto with Hull going down the ice. Allman to Smith. Smith and drives. Smith drives. Take it out of play. Allman shot and misses the upper left hand corner of the net. Army Allman came in on the rebound and missed the upper left-hand corner. Let's take a look at it again. Jim. Allman had the open net, and he seldom misses from that angle. He missed there. Morris gave him an awful lot of opening on that right-hand side, but Allman couldn't capitalize on it. He's aiming for the upper right-hand corner, and Norris had it open for him. Allman simply missed it. There is Jack Norris, who has turned in some kind of a hockey game this afternoon. He has shut the door on the leaf so far. He came in, played the last 40 minutes, the last two periods against the Montreal Canadiens last night, gave up two goals, one of which was a power, was a breakaway by Jean Beliveau. Dennis Hull tries to clear. Keon takes it away from him, who in turn loses to Stapleton. Back to Keon. Hooked away by Nestorenko. Nine minutes to play in the game. Chicago 2, Toronto nothing. Horton with the puck at his own blue line. Onto the stick and off the stick of Davy Keon. As Carlton digs in the corner for it, can't get to it in time, and Stapleton sends it along the boards to Nestorenko. Stanley keeps it in there, and they freeze it up against the boards, and we'll have a face-off in the Toronto zone. 
Davy Keon coming off the boards along with Eric Nestorenko. Eight and a half minutes remaining. Keon will do the facing off for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And Chico Mackey gets the honors for Chicago. Keon along the boards. Going for it is Murat. Checked in there by Keon. Manages to send it over there. Dennis Hull tries to clear it out. Hemmed in by Carlton. Now Keon. Driving for it is Horton. Back handers. Knocked down by Murat and sent out to center ice. There Horton waits for it. Up against the glass right below us. Keon. On to Carlton's stick. Gets around Nestorenko, but Stapleton breaks up his shot toward the goal. Backhander, and it was the skate of Murray Oliver who kicked it away from Jack Norris. Stanley keeps it in. Knocked down, so does Carlton. And the puck goes into the penalty box right below us. So the action stops now with eight minutes remaining in the final period. Let's pause for a moment. Take a good look at these faces. You may see somebody you know. In this country last year alone, some 50 million customers were turned into sheep. It happens every time a company doesn't want to bother giving you any service, or doesn't care about your name, only your account number, or doesn't want to listen to questions or problems because they're too much trouble. Sheep are easier to handle than people. All you have to do with sheep is count them. This may be very efficient, but American Airlines thinks it's an awful way to do business. So awful, we've started a new kind of coach service. We call it the American Sky Club, and it's based on a very simple proposition. You paid your money, and you're entitled to be treated like a customer. We don't fly sheep. about to resume the action now is against Alan Stanley of the Maple Leafs. This is Stanley with the puck. The Norm Ullman. Smith. Shot deflected by Stapleton. And Martin trying to get around Smith. Does so. Broken up by Toronto. Stanley keeps it in the zone. Henderson tries to get to it but it's shot that and cleared by Marat. Bobby Hall with one man to beat offside against the Blackhawks. Coming across the two lines. We might mention that immediately following our telecast of our National Hockey Day Game of the Week, Children's Film Festival today will also have a hockey flavor. It's called The Goalkeeper Also Lives on Our Street. It's in color and it's a very, very wonderful performance. I think you'll enjoy it on most of these CBS stations immediately following our hockey game. Horton with a shot on goal. Turned aside by Jack Norris. Now Marat looks for Hull. Bobby can't get control of it. Set pushes ahead for Martin. Hull digs in, kept in there, and poked away. Horton. Now, Henderson, he can't control it. Schmucks takes a swipe at it with his glove. Martin looks for Bobby Hull, breaks, tries to get the shot away. Stymied in there by Allman, and finally Henderson clears for Toronto. Six minutes to go in the game. Chicago leading two to nothing. Stapleton with the puck behind his own net. Four checked is Smith. Smith takes it away from Stapleton. Tries to center it out in front. It's finally cleared all the way down the ice by the Blackhawks. Alan Stanley pursues the puck, and icing is called against the Blackhawks. Once again, the only two goals scored in this game, one by Kenny Warham, three minutes and 45 seconds of the first period, the second one by Stan Makita at seven minutes of the first period. Makita also got an assist for the second period, I'm sorry. Makita also got an assist on that first goal by Warham. So he's picked up two big points here. Now leads Rod Gilbert of the New York Rangers. Individual point chest, uh, chased by four points. The Rangers will play Los Angeles at New York tonight. Davy Keon facing off against Chico Mackey. Hillman's back on defense for Toronto now. Right out in front of the net was Oliver, but he couldn't get a shot away. Comes back out the center ice. Rough fakes like he's going to take a nine iron shot at it instead. Dennis Hull races up. Hull loses his stick, keeps on skating after it. And now, Hillman for Toronto along the boards. Nestorenko can't stop it. Nestorenko finally comes back and does get it for Chicago. We have five minutes left to play now in the game. Five minutes to play. Ruck, bouncing puck, and Bauer clears it away. 
Wayne Carlton stopped by Dennis Hall. Rupp. Rupp hits the side of the net trying to feed it back there to his other defenseman Hillman. Hillman avoids a poke check from Mackey and the Leafs are able to clear the zone. But there Jarrett looks for Mackey ridden off by Oliver. Murray Oliver winds up starts up the ice tries to pass on to the stick of Carlton gets behind him and Dennis Hull clears for Chicago. Pierre Pilat right on over the stick of Dennis Hall. Ruff ties him up and Carlton for the Leafs. We have about four minutes remaining now. Four minutes to go. Chicago leads Toronto two to nothing. Carlton and Pilat struggle for the puck at the blue line of the Blackhawks. And finally the puck is frozen up against the boards. Carlton on the ice and we'll have a face off. Good look there at the other Stan Makita, the guy who's up on defense too. Okay, four minutes remaining. The action is stopped. Let's pause for a moment. I don't know what peace is. Peace to me is just understanding people, helping them, and it's very tranquil. Peace is a system of controlled conflict. Peace is the absence of conflict. Peace is a system of revolution of resolution. It's not right, excuse me. Peace is a system whereby you allow resolution of conflict in a peaceful manner. <laughs> wow. That's not an answer, it's just a definition. Well, I think it's a matter of conditioning. It's a kind of doing. Do unto others as you would they would do unto you. You can't go off like some starry-eyed idealist and uh, we're gonna live in a nice, happy, utopian world. Peace is tranquility. Harmony, tranquility, and security. Love. Peace is forgiving. Peace is the natural order of things. A lot of people do a lot of talking about peace. But peace is a lot more than just talk. Right. All right, action continues here. Shot on goal, taking the left-hand side. Bauer able to clear. Moans can't keep in the attacking zone. Scrambling after the Stan Makita. He and Mike Pellick bang against each other. They both go down. Pellick got it from... Gilles Marat also, and the puck is sent back to the Toronto zone. Pellick mixed it up earlier with Schmatz, and now he and Makita started a little something going. Horton slowed up by Makita, but Pulford picks it up for the Leafs. From the red line, lets it fly. It's wide to the left-hand side. Warren tries to get it out of the way. Pellick goes down. Racing for the puck now is Moans, but beaten to it by Ellis. Three minutes to go in the game. Stapleton across to Marat. Chicago leads by a two to nothing score. Makita, Ellis, and Moans. Doug Moans now. He has 199 goals in his career, and he's looking for that elusive 200 for quite a spell. Out in front. Power knocked down in there by, Ma by uh, Moans. He was struggling to get up. And we have an icing call against the Maple Leafs. That was almost the third goal. Johnny Bauer had all he could do to keep Moans out of there. And the puck was between them there for that split second. There is Johnny Bauer. Veteran goaltender of the Toronto Maple Leafs who has given up a goal to Warham in the first, McKeith in the second. Jack Norris just two and a half minutes away from the second National Hockey League shutout. now is getting tremendous protection by the Blackhawks. No doubt about the fact they're playing for the shutout. Kind of a Cinderella story about this young 25-year-old goaltender. Now Smith tries to clear. Bobby Hall intercepts. Smotch tries to get the shot away and is shoved by. Here's Hull. Kicked out by the right leg. Of Johnny Bauer. And Bobby Hall let it fly. Two minutes, 15 seconds remaining. Jarrett sends it out to center ice. Bonneville waits and they pull the goaltender. Toronto has pulled their goaltender with two minutes to play, trailing by two goals. The Maple Leaf goal is empty as the struggle goes on behind the Chicago net. Here's Pilat. He's looking for that net. Kept in there by Bonneville. Henderson to Smith. Out in front. Everybody's shoving. The puck is away. Back out to center ice. Cronovo waits for his team to get on side. A minute and 45 seconds to go. We have an empty net back in the Toronto roll. Stopped in there by Norris. Now, here goes Martin. Looks to the goal. Score! Pitt Martin scores 
for Chicago on an empty net. And let's take a look at it again. Here's Martin taking his time, putting it in there. Pronovo had no way to stop it. And Martin makes it three to nothing. Chicago with a minute and a half to go in the game. Not a rare play, but a most unusual one. And indicative of exactly how much punch him like thought this game meant to his team. With two long minutes to go to pull the goals at her, trailing by two goals. It's too late in the season to play for next day, next game, next week, or next month. And now it's a three-nothing game in favor of the Chicago Blackhawks with exactly one minute and 31 seconds remaining. Martin gets the goal. That's his 14th goal of the year. Bobby Hall and Doug Jarrett get assists on the play. Time of the goal, 1829. We have a minute and 31 seconds remaining to go in the game. There is Bobby Hull chatting over there with Pitt Martin, who just scored the goal. He wearing the helmet, getting a little liquid refreshment. Mackey facing off with Walton as the Hawks now lead it by a score of three to nothing. Toronto trying to burn a shutout. Dennis Hull. So this is Horton. We have a minute and 15 seconds to go in the game. Up the ice comes Pellick. Sent down into the Chicago zone. Ellis tries to freeze it up against the board. Stapleton loses out in front. Comes to the point. Pellick winds it up. Colford behind the net. Tries to center it out. Good defensive play in there by Marat. Breaks it up. And Norris just holds it up there. And Colford and Marat swing a little stick at each other down there. And there's the puck right up against the side of the cage. So if you joined us late, Warham scored in the first period. Makita and Jarrett getting assists. Makita scored in the second period. Warham and Moans getting assists. And Pitt Martin just scored on an empty net with assist by Doug Jarrett and by Bobby Hall. And Chicago leads it now three to nothing. All right, with the score, Chicago three and Toronto nothing. And just 50 seconds remaining, there is no apparent doubt as to the outcome of the game. In order that we might present today's film festival in its entirety, we must now leave the Chicago Stadium. Please stay tuned for the final score and join us next week for the Detroit Red Wings Minnesota North Stars game. The National Hockey League telecasts are produced by CBS Television Sports. A boy's dream of glory hinges on the outcome of a hockey game. In The Goalkeeper Also Lives on Our Street. Today's feature of the Children's Film Festival. Next in color on CBS.